certain individuals out there on the internet that like to, you know, stir things up. <laughs> and, uh, again, the only thing that I don't have in this is the, uh, hex bolt screws. Otherwise, the trim is in perfect working condition. Oh, Mr. 3G's. Are you that stupid? I tell you, this guy has no brains whatsoever. Back to the Ibanez ZR trim. All right. Look, there is a screw right there. I got an arrow pointing to it. You have it. A lot of times they're missing. You have the screw. There are no hex screws that go on the back of the trim at all. That is the screw. The back of the trim on each one of the saddles is for that screw to adjust intonation. Do you get it? Do you understand? Is there anything wrong with your common sense? Actually, there is. Finally, somebody that follows Terry 3G's has some common sense. They have some knowledge of the Ibanez ZR trim. I've been waiting for somebody else to kind of respond to the other video that he had saying, oh, I need these bolts for the back of the trim for the ZR on the Ibanez because they're missing. They're not missing, you idiot. This is kind of nice to ask somebody else. He says, I have a question. Why do you need the six hex bolts on the back of the ZR bridge? So Terry's response is, they're meant for adjustments on the trim, but quite honestly, I don't see any need use for them as the tremolo is stable how it is. Well, okay, if you didn't fuck with the tremolo or change anything on the tremolo or change the neck or anything else like that, well, things should still fall back into place, meaning that you really don't have to adjust the intonation. Therefore, you wouldn't know how to adjust the intonation on that Ibanez ZR trim because you are stupid. Finally, this guy comes up and responds and says, yeah, but it's not meant for six hex bolts on the upper side of the spot where the whammy bar B, if it was a lefty guitar, uh, there is, there you have a intonation screw. Oh my God, somebody who's smart, somebody who actually quite gets it and knows what the hell they're talking about as far as I've been waiting for this for a while. And other than myself kind of nitpicking and showing you guys the stupidity of somebody, the ignorance of somebody who doesn't know what he's doing with guitars, finally somebody else has something to say. Let's see how long this comment stays on Terry 3G's video. As anyone knows, I do have the ability to clean these up, or clean instruments up. Uh, despite what some mentally unstable individuals think about my uh, ability to work on instruments and love to make videos obsessing about it. Here we have exhibit B. Look at how high the ass end of that ZR bridge is away from the body of the guitar. What? Holy what the shit. Fuck? Something tells me that the intonation is not set correctly on there. Yeah, you really know how to set a guitar up. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about Terry 3D's Ibanez S470. Now, I've had one of these guitars. I've had my hands all over it. I did a bunch of work to it, cleaning it up, fixing the finish on it. Uh, gave that guitar away to a friend who is an actual guitar player, and he played the shit out of it, which I need to... Give him a call to find out what's been going on with him because I haven't seen him on YouTube lately. Anyways, I also have the Ibanez Premier or Prestige. I can't remember which one it's called. But it has the same type of a stabilizer system as the S470, exception of it's got a different style of a trim on it. The trim on mine is not hinged. This one to ZR is. So, let's talk about kind of what we're looking at here. I'm going to zoom in on this photo so you can see what I mean now. Again, I've had this guitar. I kind of know what I'm talking about and what I'm looking at here. If you look at the back cover plate and you look at the uh, kind of looks like a set screw, it's an Allen key screw that is at the top of the back plate for the trim, and you see it's got a little bit of a shadowing effect around it. Um, it's actually sticking up a little bit past the plate a little bit not by much but it's not supposed to that's actually supposed to be uh 
in the plate, not sticking up a little bit through the plate, because he shaved the shit out of the back of that guitar body. You know, he was talking about and saying something about how he had to so-called mill the screws so they were deeper into the back of the body for the neck, which you shouldn't have had to do that at all if you didn't sand the piss out of the body, right? Look at that face. Now that's a face only his mother can love. Yeah, the look of disgust once again. It's been shown in another video of something that he's done that he's not really too happy about. You know, when somebody's doing work on something or has done work on something and they're showing it off, they have this uh, enthusiastic build up to them. They, they really want to show you it. They're excited about what they've done. Not Terry 3G's because he knows that someone like me is going to make a video about what he's done and how it looks. So he sits there and talks about how uh, this is a 20 some year old guitar and it should look like a 20 year old guitar. Well, then common sense kind of tells me then why the hell did you bother refinishing it twice when it was fine when you first got it, number one. Number two, uh, for something that he supposedly buffed out and bought a bunch of shit and now is using the same type of rubbing compound that I'm using, uh, which is the McGuire's Ultimate, um, yeah, where's the high gloss finish? That's black. That should have a mirror-like finish to where you can see clearly anything that bounces off that guitar as far as a reflection goes. And it looks blurry. Also, it looks wavy as fuck. Yeah, nice job, Terry. So as Terry 3G says in this video, look, it's got a reflection. So fucking what? It doesn't mean your finish is quality finish at all. Hell, I wouldn't even take and, and polish rust the way you do things. I could take 2,500 grit sandpaper and wet sand a surface and have it have a reflection. Wait a minute, I have done that before, haven't I? Hmm. And I got videos to prove it. This is basically a warning to you guys, okay? Don't follow what this guy is saying. He is a hack. Don't try to do whatever he explains in any of his videos of what processes he has been taking. Do not do them. He doesn't know what he's talking about and you are going to ruin something that you may cherish. With that being said, I will catch all you guys later. Take it easy, have a good one, and keep honking your horn.